now on the Fox Sports Hotline, we have a special guest, UFC lightweight Bobby King Green joins us. Of course, Bobby Green is now expected to face Jim Miller at UFC 172, April 26th in Baltimore. Bobby, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. Uh, I'll be doing better once we fight. <laughs> Well, it's so great to hear you, and thank you for taking the time to join the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, like you said, you've got a big fight here coming up against Jim Miller. Uh, you're riding a seven-fight win streak coming into it, still undefeated in the UFC. I mean, what has this ride been like for you so far? It's been wonderful, you know. The UFC has changed my life, you know. Um, I went from sleeping on my brother's couch to having my own house, you know, so I'm so blessed. Oh, bless. One of the things that a lot of people had talked about when you guys first, and I mean the Strike Force fighters were coming into the UFC, was that, you know, we'll see where they stand, we'll see where they match up. But one thing that you've done is you've shown that you belonged in the UFC that whole time, and that Strike Force wasn't a feeder league. It was just as competitive. Uh, do you think that you, you, especially you, not just the other guys, but you've pushed that standard or that stereotype aside? I'm not a strike force fighter making my way into the UFC. I'm a UFC fighter. Uh, yes and no. Um, a little bit of both. I feel like I'm always going to be uh, loyal and recognize where I came from. Because you, if you don't know where you came from, you're not going to know where you're going. You know, so I'll always be a strike force fighter. But at the same time, I'm a UFC guy. You know, what I'm saying I'm a company man. Where whoever's representing me. I'm going to represent them to the fullest, you know. So it's just an honor to uh, be a part of UFC. I've wanted to be here for so long. And and I waited for so long thinking I would never make it. So to actually be here is like a dream now. Well, Bobby, uh, you know, coming into the UFC, you first fought uh, Jacob Volkman, and you were able to submit him. Then there was the James Krause fight, which you won. Then Pat Healy, you took on less than 30 days' notice and uh, you were expected to fight at UFC on Fox 9. That was the uh, April Trujillo. I believe you were expected to uh, match up against him. But uh, you had pulled out of that fight. I mean, that would have been, though, three fights in four months. I mean, uh, stepping away for a moment. I mean, and it just it had you taken that Trujillo fight. How much of a toll does that take on a fighter? Um, that's the thing about me. Like, if anybody remembers you from Strike Force, um, I was, they called me Mr. Short Notice, all the short time guys, because when someone fell out of a fight, they called me. And they said, Bobby will take that fight. And I get, I don't think I remember getting, like, really any fight over three weeks, you know? Um, so, I'm always used to that type of, uh, of schedule. Um, when I was in, uh, back in my earlier days, I fought, uh, in Mexico. I did three fights in one night, you know? Um, I fought Dan Levine on 24 hours notice. So these are the things that I'm used to. I'm just used to getting up and being ready to fight this day. You don't have a training camp. You know what I'm saying? I so for me, it was just like, uh, people go, wow, he did two fights in 30 days. You know, and actually you forgot to mention I was going to fight Danny Castillo too, but I busted my hand up. You know what I'm saying? So I would have fought Danny Castillo and... That would have been another fight on, on the, on the uh, list. You know what I'm saying? So it's always me trying to be as active as possible. I want to be the most active fighter in the UFC, you know? Um, but the problem is that there's, it takes so much toll on your body. It takes a, a, a lot on your body. So um, I remember fighting the, the Pat Healy fight, uh -huh. and I wanted to jump right back into it. I'm telling like, hey, I'm ready to go back again. Let's do this again, you know? Telling um, my manager. But the problem had been that I had not seen a doctor yet. To be cleared, I've seen the doctor, but you always have wake up the next day and you always have those oh, ouch and ouch, you know, those, those minor bumps and stuff that you don't really think about until the next day. You don't feel them because your adrenaline's still going and, and all this stuff is just happening. You're so excited, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're glad to see you getting back in here. And you have ahead of you a real tough test and a perennial contender in the lightweight division with Jim Miller. When you take a look at this fight, where do you see your advantages? Where do I see my advantages? Um, I have to say that, like, I never like to say that I'm better than someone in anything because I feel like my advantage is my humbleness, you know? Um, um, 
I just let God take care of the fight. I don't want to say that I'm better than him here and better than there. And then people will go back later on and say, hey, you were running out there talking trash or running your mouth and saying that you were better than him here and he beat you there. See you know what I'm saying? That's where I think a lot of fighters have went wrong when they fought me. When I fought Volkman, Volkman was like, well, I'm a better wrestler. I'm going to take him down and I'll submit him. But when I submitted him, it makes him look so much worse because he said that's what he'd do to me. And then um, I'm just a carefree guy. I let the fight go wherever it goes. I have no idea where, what, and what will happen. I just know that whatever it is, I want it to be exciting. I don't, I don't know where I'm better at. Because when I say that I'm better here, then I'm going to find out that what if I'm not better there? That just makes my whole uh, plan. So I don't expect it to be better anywhere, and I don't expect for him to um, expect to have weaknesses anywhere. I just let the fight go. Uh, and you do an amazing job of that, and we are on the line right now with Bobby King Green, who's taking on Jim Miller at UFC 172 in Baltimore coming up in a couple of weeks. Now, you, you talked about the Jacob Volkman fight and how you took him down. You submitted him. Pat Healy, you basically fought Pat Healy's type of fight and beat him at his own game. Now, is that part of the game plan when you walk in there is like, okay, this is where the fight's going to go and I'm going to be ready for it? Or is that actually just something that you kind of like let unfold? Um, a bit of both, you know. Um, I like to say that um, the UFC has done this thing with me. What I've noticed is that they put every type of fighter in front of me, you know. So with Volkman, I fought the wrestler. Um, and I just really want to show that um, I'm a complete fighter. So with Volkman, I fought the wrestler and I beat the wrestler at wrestling. Then I fought James Krause, who's a striker, and I beat the striker at striking. Then I fought Pat Healy, who's a grinder, mm-hmm. and, 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 and a cardio machine, and I showed that I can have just as much and do just as much work as him and, and still win these fights. You know, So now I feel like with, with uh, Jim Miller, I'm getting the jiu-jitsu practitioner, and I'm going um, to have to beat him. So my thing is I try to beat the guys the best at what they're best at. You know, um, show that I'm like, I didn't run from their best. You know, a lot of guys are like, hey, if you're going to fight Ronda Rousey, don't go to the ground with her. You know, <laughs> don't go to the ground with her because you're going to lose. You know, I've been getting that already with, with Jim Miller. Don't go to the ground with him. Why not? Uh, I feel that I'm confident in my, in my uh, skills that I should be able to be okay wherever the fight goes. Now, in fact, actually, you and Jim have a similar opponent, and that is Pat Healy. And Pat actually took home the win submitting Jim. And, uh, you know, when you look at that fight, do you see any advantages or do you, cause they are such very similar fighters, you know, have you looked at that fight and kind of put together a game plan? No, they're similar to, uh, they're similar to each other on paper. They're totally different and actually, actually in the cage, you know, um, I would say Pat Healy is more of a, the wrestler type and, ju- uh, and, 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 uh, excuse me, Jim would be the, uh, more jujitsu jiu-jitsu type you know so i wouldn't say that they're exact like and then this is the other thing styles make fights so i don't ever feel like just because i beat pat that i should go in there and beat uh jim his style is a little different and it could be totally different than what i'm dealing with with pat you know what I'm absolutely you're 100 percent right with that because we've learned if, it, if there's anything we've learned about this sport in the the short 20 years it's been around is that mixed martial arts math does not work it does not work at all. You can't say, hey, I beat this guy. And, you know, he, so that doesn't work out the same way. But one thing that I really got to say is with your fight with Pat Healy, one thing that I really noticed was the improvement in your striking game. It is, was absolutely beautiful. The crisp jabs you were throwing, you're so light on the feet. Uh, what have you been doing with that? Because I know you came from a wrestling background in high school. What, did you, what are you doing with your stand-up game? Who's your coach and, and what's your days like with training for stand-up? Um... Um, I work with, this is my thing. I love to spar. That is my favorite thing to do, spar. I don't really like, my coaches have to like force me to do drilling and force me to do like my ground and pound and force me to do this and that because I love to spar. I'll spar every day of the week if I could. And invest with, but this is with, we're not in boxing. We're not into, um, we're not glory or anything, those things. So, I have to understand that it's MMA, and those are all the things that come in with MMA is ground and work and ground and pound and wrestling and all these other things. So um, I felt like my hands have always been um, somewhat similar, the same. The problem is I haven't had a true fighter to show it, you know. 
all these fights that you've seen, um, they usually are wrestlers. And most of the time, I can't even get my hands off because I'm waiting for the takedown. Again, uh, we are on the line right now with UFC lightweight Bobby Green. He's fighting at UFC 172 on April 26th. Uh, Bobby, kind of staying along those lines of your training and all, how do you prevent as a fighter from becoming too complacent? Uh, like we had mentioned earlier, you do have a seven-fight win streak. You're 3-0 and in the UFC. How do you prevent yourself from becoming too settled and too comfortable with the fact of winning? Um, because if I lose, I look at it like they could take my house. Like I look at it like everything could be over for me, you know? And maybe that might not be a reality to everyone else looking from the outside, but to me, it's I lose and I lose all of this. I'm not gonna, I can't lose. I can't afford to let my family be in any, um, any jeopardy, you know? So for me, it's all about my family that keeps me from being complacent. But then too, you have to, uh, you have to always keep something interesting. You know, like right now, this next fight, I'm working on some new things for my, uh, fight. You know, I call my, I call my style. Poetry and motion. So I'm working on a new art to make fighting even more beautiful. You know, I want to make this um, a movie that you're watching. And in this movie that you're watching, you just go, oh, wow, I can't believe he did that. You know, Why do you do that? You know, like um, Anthony Pettis is on that same tip where he's doing all these flashy things. And, and I might not be as much flashy as Anthony because I feel like those are some big risks that you take, you know, um, and it could easily cost you the fight. But at the same time, I'm still trying to, uh, I don't want to be boring. I don't want to let you guys get to like, oh, well, maybe we should change the channel and, and come back, you know, and maybe they'll, they'll be b- b- fighting good when I come back. I want to keep you entertained the whole time. Wow, I like the way you say that and, and, and describing your art right there as kind of poetry. And it's, it's a long way from where you came from because I remember years ago they am introducing you on Bully Beatdown <laughs> as a as your style of fighting is hood fighting, all right? And now it's kind of turned into a ballet of violence. And I want to go back to that, ba- you know, that day back when you were doing B- Bully Beatdown, one of the most entertaining episodes I'd ever seen. What was it like for you to to put that bully in his place years ago? Um, I don't, it's not, it's not easy to me because where I'm from, there's bullies everywhere. I've got... I was, all my life, I've had people trying to bully me or bully someone else, and it's, I've always had to stand up for people like that. So for me, it was just another day in the office, you know. Um, but at the same time, it was um, a wonderful thing to be blessed to be uh, to get that footage, you know, to be, get that exposure. Even though people to this day, they tell me they didn't know that was me. They don't <laughs> recognize me. I guess I changed my facial hair so much that they can't recognize that that is me. <laughs> and then they go, whoa, that was you on the show? Oh, you're so awesome, blah, 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 blah. But you've known me for like the last year and you didn't even know that was me. <laughs> that was, and, and if, if you haven't seen the episode, people, you need to go out and see it. Because one of the best things about it is that guy didn't want to continue. I mean, going into the second round, he was like, uh uh-uh, uh, he got to knock me out. <laughs> and one of the things, and that's a little surprising that people didn't know it was you because your trademark slams were plastered all over that first round. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, the uh, the guy that I fought, he was um, he actually beat up another bully um, during casting. <laughs> another bully, and it kind of like cost him one of their shows. And on top of that, um, there was um, Jeremy Horn was there. Uh, he was like yep. basically the guy that was gonna uh, warm the guys up, and he's a legend. And I heard the guy badmouth Jeremy Horn too. What? So that, yeah, yeah. So I was at that point. I was like, okay, he's had enough. He's he's done enough showing off. Let's show them what this is really about, you know. So my whole thing was not even, I'm, I didn't even want the submission. I just wanted to slam the hell out of him just to let him know what we can do as fighters. Yeah, I think you busted his spleen on one of those slams. He didn't look like he was happy. And, uh, and listen, Bobby, thank you so much for that because that was the most entertaining episode of Bully Beatdown there ever was. Oh, thanks, bud. That's, that's, that's so big for you to say that because there was a lot of competition on there. And every person that was doing an episode, I was realizing I have to beat this. Like, I see Jeremy Horn do, like, this helicopter spin thing. And I was like, how am I going to beat that? And then the next guy came out, and he came up with something creative. And he came up with something creative. I was like, holy moly, how do you top these, you know? And then I did mine. And then still Jason Miller, um, Mayhem Miller came after me. So he got to see everyone and do his show after everyone else. So 
he came up with the best stuff. I felt like Jason was the best, but thank you so much. I uh, appreciate that. No, because look at the guys you had that were on there. Tyrone Woodley, Eddie Alvarez, lots of big-name fighters were on there, and uh, you took the cake, Bobby. Uh, thanks, bro. You know, Bobby, we actually do have to head to break here, but I do have one quick last question before we do. Uh, you know, obviously Jim Miller here is ranked up in the top 10 of the UFC lightweight division, and you're coming in right now at number 14. So how big of an opportunity is that for you to catapult yourself up the rankings? It's big, it's big. I was 12, I guess I got knocked back to 14. Yeah, I'm looking so, at um, it right now. I went to go double check it. It says, it says number 14 right now. I think yeah, Miles yeah, yeah. Jury swept up in there with his win over Diego. R- rankings mean nothing, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're honest. You're, you're right. You're right. To be honest, you're right. But um, for me, it, it means the world because I feel like everyone's counting me out of this fight. Everyone's counting me out of this fight. You know. Um, and um, for me, it's like I feel like I'm fighting for my respect. You know, everybody's fighting for money. Everybody's fighting for this different things. I'm fighting for respect. Like there's some guys that all the time I get it. All the time, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is that? And I'm like, they don't even know who I am, so everybody's on Miller's side. So I'm fighting just for my respect, you know? I'm fighting for for my uh, acknowledgement. Well, thank you again so much for your time, and we are looking forward to seeing you against Jim Miller. That's, again, April 26th at UFC 172. We really appreciate your time, Bobby, but right now we've got to go on and head out to break. Thank you so much. It was an honor for you guys having me.